What up, Juggalos? Panic 17 here. Just chilling. Um, I'm not sure if this is going to go on my channel or uh, um, Carnival Spirits. I really don't know. It's going to be one of my deeper videos. Um, <clears throat> I'm playing uh, Battlefield 4, my PlayStation 4, right now. As you can probably see through my glasses. Um, as soon as I die, I'm just going to let this chill. I think I'm about to. But anyways, like I said, this is going to be a deeper video. I was uh, smoking a little a little bit and uh, just listening to music. I uh, forgot what I started on. Uh, I think I listened to Careless Whisper by Seether. Uh, I think I was listening to a little bit of Duran Duran. Uh, how the fuck? Okay, then I started listening to Blue October Hate Me. And then it, it reminded me of a song that I used to listen to when I was fucking really, really depressed. It's called The Answer. Now, this is high school days. This is, you know, teenager shit. So, I've always, uh, I've always kind of done videos like this, talk about my depression. Um, I'm not over it, you know, by any means I'm not over it. But I am nowhere near at all close to how deep down and depressed I was, you know, back in the day. Uh, never got close to doing suicide. Never thought about, well, I guess I've maybe thought about it, but I never got close to it where I was actually thinking about ways to kill myself. It never, it just never got there. In a sick way, I kind of liked being depressed. I kind of liked feeling down. It got to that point, but never where I wanted to slit my throat or take pills to kill myself or whatever but uh I would love to listen to depressing music to the point where I got extremely down on myself and would probably end up crying more than likely uh, I never really cried too much but every now and then when it would get too much I would eventually do it I'm pretty sure but uh like I said the songs the answer by uh, Blue October, and I'll put it down there because I'm pretty sure y'all are going to be wondering. And it was really fucking weird to listen to that song now, and it fucking choked me up listening to it. Because I just remember exactly how it was and how I felt around that time in my life. and Just really fucking confused. And teens go through a lot of confusion. There's a lot of different type of confusion in that and around that time my thing my confusion was what the fuck is wrong with me you know just because I'm a little bit bigger you know maybe I got glasses or whatever uh, you know bitches don't like me and that was a really big uh, thing going on in my head and most people dismiss it as oh you're just a pussy or whatever but it was a big thing to me and I could give a fuck less really what anybody fucking thinks because we're fucking human you know what I'm saying like we're fucking human beings we've got emotions we've got feelings and everything like that it is a big it's it's not a big deal it's not something that well I don't know see that's where it gets too deep because it can be really big to someone to the point where they're willing to kill themselves to me it was a big deal but it never got to the point where I was like you know what I've really got to just end this shit now what what would get me through those times is uh, smoking weed hanging out with my friends and video games those were the three big things that fucking helped me and some of you are probably were wondering well why didn't your family help you and that's because I never told them nothing uh, I never told anybody really what I was going through except maybe like a friend or two and really at that age what can you do you know what I mean like how can you really help your friend who's going through this uh, mental war which feels kind of apocalyptic, I guess, at the time. You know, it feels like on that kind of scale, like, 
at the end something's gonna happen, you know, I'm either gonna be alive or fucking, you know, who knows, it feels that fucking big to you, like, at the end of all this, something big's gonna happen, and you don't know what. Excuse me, uh, sorry about that, but, it's just fucking crazy, man, and I was, uh, I was kind of laughing at the end, because while the song's going, you know, it's real deep, fucking, I feel like I swallowed a, a razor blade, and after the song was over, I'd say about five, five seconds later, I was laughing, I'm just like, whoa, you know, <clears throat> it's like, uh, I put a virtual reality glasses on, and it took me back to the day, and the second, and the time of listening to that song, and how I felt, and I realized, like, whoa, I've made so much fucking progress since that, that era. It's fucking nuts. If I, I wish I could have went to myself and told myself, look, dude, at the end of this, you have no idea how much better it's going to get, you know, because at the end of all that severe depression, I got a girlfriend finally, you know. And I'm not trying to sound, I'm pretty sure most of y'all heard me talk about this a lot, but I'm pretty sure there's someone out there who could use a story like this. I don't fucking know. But all I know is it's got to help somebody. But anyways, at the end of all the fucking craziness that there was the era of my life I had finally got a girl and she wanted to get with me you know I'm not trying to sound like a big shot a cool guy I ain't fucking cool but she wanted to get with me and we ended up being together for like two months and then basically her and her sister got in a big fight she was staying at her her sister's house her sister was living with her boyfriend and she kept hinting to me that she wanted she implied it. She didn't hint. She implied that she needed somewhere to stay. And I know what she was wanting. She was wanting to stay with me out of my house. When I got together with her, I was on probation. I couldn't smoke weed. Halfway through, I got off probation started smoking weed again. And towards the end of the relationship, I just didn't care anymore. I wanted to smoke weed, hang out with my friends because I hadn't done it in months. Which really surprised the fuck out of me because most people who get their first girlfriend become bitch made you know what I'm saying they forget their friends they forget everybody and uh, they go off with their girlfriends for however long then when it ends they realize oh shit you know my friends and all that I never got like that I didn't get that attached I guess because I wasn't truly like in in love with her I, I was kind of just thrown into it out of nowhere but I guess the uh, the point of this video is that no matter how much this war in your head seems like something big's gonna happen at the end and it's not gonna be good it is very possible very possible that something good is gonna come if you withstand this internal war in your fucking head because something good happened for me and I had no fucking clue no fucking clue at all I mean if you think man this this dude ain't this dude has no idea how bad I have it I'm probably right there with you or a little bit behind you and maybe you got a little bit worse but believe me I, I didn't think nothing good would happen to me I still fucking don't that was the only girl I had it's been fucking seven years you know what I'm saying so uh I'm still here, man. I'm still fucking, you know, I'm still fucking trying. I'm still doing the thing. Uh, just know that uh, if you if you, if you outlast this craziness, something good's going to happen. Because it happened for me. And I'm the mo I'm the most unluckiest motherfucker ever. You know what I'm saying? Like and, and it's funny because I started thinking, like, some people go to therapy for this, and they go, you know, well, how does that make you feel? I don't want to go to, like, this is my therapy, doing this, talk, talking, and 
talking with my friends and just like all, all the things that I listed were my therapy. If I'm going to talk to somebody, I want to talk to somebody who has a fucking scar on their neck from slitting their throat and surviving. I don't want to talk to some, you know, dude or chick fucking in a dress, uh, casual dress attire. I want somebody in all black with long hair and a fucking, you know, scar on the neck, like I said, from slitting their throat. Somebody who you could tell, well, this dude's been through war and he's still fucking here. Let, let's see what the fuck his story is. Not somebody that you got to pay fucking $100 an hour for. I think that's where the true uh, therapy comes in for both people. Because I think if I were to act like all that never happened, I would probably fall back into it. And like I said, I'm not 100% fixed. Everything's not great, but... I'm nowhere fucking near what I was, you know, back then. There's no way I could ever do it again. I, I'm lying. I probably could do it again, but I wouldn't want to. So, uh, hopefully somebody needed to hear that. Um, I like to kick out these videos like this every now and then. Because you never know. You, know, you never know what the fuck people are going through. Who, who fucking knows? Because I know I wasn't going to tell fucking anybody unless if I did tell somebody, I knew they wouldn't say anything. The people, to me, that go out there and port portray themselves as, oh, I'm so depressed, they want attention. The true de depressed people, you will never fucking know what they're going through. And I know because that's how I was. I wouldn't, you wouldn't even fucking know. Even on my videos, some of the videos that I've done on here, I was probably going through something right before I turned that fucking camera on. I almost guarantee you. I can't remember, but I know there was a few videos that I was going through some hard shit. Turn on the videos. Hey, what's up? Panic 17 here in this motherfucker. Just chilling, fucking smoking, playing some games. You know what I'm saying? But that's just the way it is. You'll never know. So that's about it. Whoop. Two.